I did have a dream that I had seen her as an older woman and she was standing on a dock and I was standing on shore and I couldn't get to her for some reason because the dock was moving and um, but I waved so my thoughts are she's just waiting She was my first child, and she was born March 28, 1974. And then I was told that there was a problem with the heartbeat, and uh, they suspected that she had a hole in her heart. The worst part of our job is breaking the news. But you have to remember that we are living in an era that, that practicing medicine in this field is very gratifying and the reason why it's gratifying because we have a lot of options for those kids. My daughter's name is Erica Elizabeth and I, we chose that name because it was a strong name and uh, we felt she deserved it. She was a strong child. The sound of the, her heartbeat and the x-ray showed that the hole was too large to do anything that she would not survive the operation. And so our best bet was to just, um, you know, take each day as it came and, and hope that she would survive. You know, the diseases 20 years ago that we used to tell parents that, you know, you just take him home and just comfort and whatnot. Nowadays, we treat them and we put them almost on 100% chances of living a normal life. So we just, took each day and, and she was doing fine and, and she started eating and running around like crazy as soon as she learned to walk and she was just like every other child. Well, I can tell you for a fact that that machine, that pump, which is the heart, is made to be very resilient. At two years old, they felt that it would be safe enough to do the um, repair. To look in the room, you couldn't even see there was a body in there. You could only you could look through the the window, and it was just all doctors and machines, and it was very scary. But she came through in flying colors. Uh, surgery went well. Especially, you know, when you have a baby that uh, you know starts smiling, and you see, look at those all those scars. You forget all about the scars because that smile wipes it out. And life was good. I mean, we, we thought we dodged a bullet. She had a, a very bubbly personality. She had a lot of hopes and dreams for her future. She had a boyfriend. And then at 15, she started getting tired. And um, so the doctors attributed her fatigue to possibly just adolescence. Even parents that got frustrated, you know, with the disease and whatnot and why they have this and these questions that, that sometimes we don't have answers for, they feel that, you know, no matter what, why we are here, at least we, you know, our child is going to be normal beyond this point. As uh, we're Going through the school year, uh, the beginning of April, she had a fainting spell at school. They discovered what was happening was uh, hypertension. And a lot of times kids that do have hypertension don't recover from the fainting spell. Pulmonary hypertension to terms that people understand, it's an elevated lung pressure. People always wonder, you know, why elevated lung pressure is important. Well, it is important because it's going to impact the, the function of the lungs itself. And obviously it's going to impact the heart itself. The disease that was affecting her this time was heart disease, but it was totally different. And it wasn't in conjunction with her first heart, heart 
problem. Like this disease is like a runaway train, you can't stop it. And once the blood vessels start constricting and cutting off your oxygen to the lungs, uh, there's no turning, you can't reverse it. The heart, the right side of the heart is not used to take high pressure. So if you make the heart work harder, ultimately it will fail. So immediately she was put on the transplant list because of not having a cure. The only cure would be to replace what's being damaged. So she would have to get a heart and lung transplant. The chance of a transplant was almost impossible because you have to get fitted perfectly for a lung. Theoretically speaking, you might come and say, you know, what, how, how lucky you can be, or obviously in this case, how sad you can be that you have two diseases. Can't we connect the two together? Well, maybe there is a connection, but we don't know it yet. There was a, uh, this drug that they had, it was fairly new on the market, and they wanted to try it. It was our last hope, of, and they insert a catheter in her neck and put the tube down into the heart, or down to the lungs to administer this uh, medication to expand the blood vessels. During the procedure, it punctured her lung. She, she passed away in the hospital. Uh, that was, uh, she just couldn't recover from it. We found out in April, and she died June 17th, 1990. I can tell you, I have been in this area for 10 years. And obviously, you know, losing four kids is too many. But that's the number. It's painful. Um, the pain doesn't go away, it just hides. You just push it aside. Then we agreed to the autopsy because we knew what had killed her, but for research, I mean, you need to, um, you have to give up a little. Definitely in the last 10 years, we made a lot of leaps on that subject. And I don't think we are at the point where we, we are, um, um, we can say that, you know, primary pulmonary hypertension is 100% treatable, but we have made a lot of progress in that area. But I hope that they will find a cure for this primary pulmonary hypertension because it is a rare disease, but like I said, as it wasn't rare to me. It, it is so gratifying to practice medicine in this era because there's so much that we can do for those kids. And I repeat this again and again because it's really, the stories about uh, successes are uh, all over the place, you know, uh, and, and, and that's, that's why I, uh, I enjoy what I do every single day. My thoughts are, she's just waiting. She's doing what she has to do now, and I keep doing what I have to do. It's life.